That's pretty much Minnesota. It's still totally small towns in most of the state, and its largest cities are growing at a quick pace. The kind of place where most folks still have good values. They live off the land and enjoy good conversation. It's the 17th fastest growing state in the U.S. Not impressive, but not too bad either. So the last time we talked about Minnesota, we learned a lot. Like we learned that a lot of the state's an empty wasteland of farms. Much of the northern part of the state's filled with lake cabins and vast forests. And there's some pretty lake homes along Lake Superior. We also learned about all the drama happening in Minneapolis. We also learned where the best and worst places to live are in Minnesota. Like the best places you can live are going to be along the North Shore and places like Duluth and in the western Minneapolis suburbs. We also learned that North Minneapolis, Bemidji, and Virginia are all bad places to live, for the most part. But if you're going to move here, or you live here, you should know a lot more about Minnesota than just that. There's all kinds of facts, history, and news that affect people in Minnesota today. So that's what we're going to do in this video, kind of pick up where we left off and talk about Minnesota even more. We're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff and even meet people from Minnesota who are going to tell us where we should move and where we should not move if we make Minnesota our home. So it's time to begin Corner House Tales, Minnesota, the hot dish state. Minnesota, Min, Minnesota Tales, Min, Minnesota, Min, Minnesota Tales, Min, Minnesota, Min, Minnesota Tales. And now it's time for some Minnesota facts, people. I hate Minnesota facts. If you're thinking about moving to Minnesota, you should know more about the state. A lot of this stuff are facts that even residents don't know. Now they say Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, but if you count smaller bodies of water, Minnesota has 15,000 lakes, but you knew that. But did you know that Minnesota has more recreational boats than any other state? There's a boat here for one in every six people, people. It also might not be a surprise that water skis were invented here. Minnesotans also invented rollerblades because, you know, you have to play hockey here all year long. And by the way, here's what the Wikipedia page looks like for the list of Minnesota lakes. It's really long. Some of these lake names are bad. Lake 0AA, Lake 0BB, <laughs> there's three lake ones. Come on, Minnesota people, name your lakes better. There's some funny lake names too. My favorite is Big Too Much Lake. There's also Disappointment Lake right next to Parent Lake. You Minnesota people, I tell ya. Minnesota produces more turkeys each year than any other state. They ship out more than 45 million gobble gobblers every single year. Many are used at Thanksgivings. Minnesota has the largest Hmong community in the U.S. Most of the Hmong population is in St. Paul. A large number of Hmongs fled Southwest Asia beginning in the mid-1970s because of communism. Why the Twin Cities? Well, Minnesota had a long reputation as being a progressive place that welcomed immigrants. Plus, there were plenty of jobs and great schools here. That's why. You know who else makes Minneapolis home? Somalis do. A lot of Somalis fled Somalia during a civil war in the 1990s, and they eventually flocked to Minneapolis, again because of the strong economy and good schools. Of all places, you'd think maybe these ethnic groups would want to be somewhere warm, but they seem to like it here. Speaking of weather, on the 4th of July in 1859, the temperature in Minneapolis dropped below freezing. What a terrible fireworks show that probably was. Can you imagine watching fireworks in 20 degree weather? It is a fact that nobody ever takes the last of something at a Minnesota potluck. If it's a donut or hot dish, folks will literally just keep cutting it in half and taking a small piece. That's awful nice of you folks. The Metrodome in Minneapolis is the only stadium in the country to host a World Series, a Super Bowl, and an NCAA Final Four basketball championship. Good for you guys at the Metrodome. Minnesota is a really healthy state. It ranks first when it comes to percentage residents who exercise regularly. It's also second best in two other categories, infant mortality and life expectancy. So that must mean there's a lot of old people in Minnesota, huh? Minnesota is the only state where a former wrestler became governor. He was Jesse Ventura, seen here during his time in the WWF. This guy also wrestled, though not as well, and he became president. It's a fact that Minnesotans love their snowmobiles. 
It's also a fact they will go to no length to get them repaired. People say Minnesota State birds a mosquito, which isn't true, but this state is home to more than 50 different mosquito species, but apparently only 15 of Minnesota's mosquito species will actually bite you. No idea what the other ones do all day. Minneapolis ranks third in the country for number of parks within its city limits. Back when they designed the city layout, they made sure to include a park every six blocks. Today, 96% of people in Minneapolis are within a 10-minute walk of a park. Maybe that's why they're so healthy here. Minnesota isn't called the gopher state because there's gophers all over. Come on now. It's because of this political cartoon, which portrayed shifty railroad barons as striped gophers pulling a railroad car. Who knows why they did that, but if they didn't do that, we wouldn't have Goldie Gopher, would we? For two weeks in 1965, Minneapolis was an hour behind St. Paul. That's because daylight savings time began, but Minneapolis waited two weeks before they officially switched their clocks. That was weird. A three-year-old named Bobby Tufts was elected to mayor of Dorset, a teeny little place of 22 people in Hubbard County near Park Rapids. He didn't even have a platform. His name was drawn from a hat. Well, a 16-year-old, a 4-year-old, and Bobby's 3-year-old brother were also elected as Dorset's mayors at some point. Can we get a 3-year-old mayor in Minneapolis? It can't get any worse. Did you know the oldest person in the whole state is 113 years old? She's from New Ulm. I did not know that, Mappy. But wow, she looks great for 100. I hear that when you turn 100 here in the U.S., you get a letter from the president. Does that mean that Joe Biden's going to be sending himself... A letter soon? LOL, JK. But guess what? It's time for some Minnesota trivia. Let's call some people from Minnesota and see if they can answer some tough Minnesota questions. I hope they don't get any of these right. All right, do you want to do some trivia questions about Minnesota? Let's do this. Okay, so I've got five questions about minnesota and we'll see how many you can get right and you're you've lived there for at least i'm guessing you're like you're 21 22 <laughs> 33 but thank you <laughs> for 33 years okay they're, they're not too bad um okay so the first question is um so there was a cartoon based in minnesota um do you know what cartoon that was there was a cartoon like a tv cartoon mm-hmm and it's probably before your time, so you may not know it, but you you probably I know you've heard of it. But it was based in Minnesota. Gosh. Um uh, I don't know that. I know there was a movie based here, Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> but I don't know the cartoon. So there's a cartoon that's based out of Minnesota. Do you know what cartoon that is? Oh uh, yes. Uh the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, yeah? Yes, it is right. That yeah. is right. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh-huh. Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. Well, that's right, man. Good for you. Minnesota has the most ice fishermen uh, in the country. Um, that might not be hard to, um, or a surprise to you. Um, but there's a state law, and I'm wondering if you know What's the limit number of poles that you can have um, in the ice at one time? Hmm. Okay. Oh, let's see. Three? It's actually two. Two. Okay. Just one, right? Uh, apparently it's two. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Okay, let's try another question. Okay, I have to get one right. You you have to. Okay, I hope you get this one right. Okay, so Minnesota has like 10,000 or 20,000 lakes or whatever. Um, what's the biggest lake in Minnesota? I believe that's Mille Lacs. No. Mm -mm. Shoot. <laughs> oh, the biggest lake. Is it uh, Mille Lacs Lake? No. Or lake of the Lake of the Woods. That's the second biggest. That's the second biggest. Oh, Lake Superior. Yeah, Lake Superior. Oh, gosh, it, it's such a big body of water that you never actually think of it as a lake. Like when you're on it, it looks like an ocean. It's insane. 
Um, this one's going to be pretty hard, but uh, I'll give it to you if you're close. How many stores are in the Mall of America? How many stores in the Mall of America? Um, like 600? It's actually pretty close. It's actually 520. Okay. Um, let's go with 350. More. <laughs> 750. No, five, I think there's, <laughs> there's 520. That's crazy. Yeah, that is a big, big store. Do you know the name of the University of Minnesota's mascot? Goldie? The gopher? Yeah, Goldie Gopher. I got one. <laughs> you got two. You got the Lake Superior, too. Well, that was my second guess, but we can count it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, the Goldie Gopher. It is Goldie Gopher. Yes. All right. Is that like everybody knows that? Is that like you have to know that if you live in Minnesota? Pretty much. Yeah. University of Minnesota is kind of a big deal. And now it's time for the history of Minnesota in three minutes or less. A long time ago, before you ever thought about moving to Minnesota, it was different. Back before it was all quick trips and long Minnesota goodbyes. Minnesota wasn't even Minnesota. It was all covered in sheets of ice. These large glaciers covered a lot of Minnesota up until about 10,000 years ago. Then they retreated and left lots of awesome soil and a bunch of lakes, including Lake Itasca, which is where the Mississippi River begins. Here it is right here, this little trickle. You can actually just walk right across it. So after the ice sheets melted, the Native Americans could move in and hunt and fish. There were a lot of Native American tribes in the land of Minnesota, including the Chippewa and the Dakota Sioux. In fact, it was the Sioux who kind of came up with the name of this state. They called the Minnesota River the Mini-Soda River. Mini meaning water and soda meaning cloudy because the river reflected the clouds. Neat, huh? But of course, it wasn't peaceful rivers flowing here forever. It's the history of the United States. Nothing was peaceful for too long. Come on now, because here came the Europeans. In the 1600s, the French were the first to come here. They were looking for a northwest passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific. This was a very dangerous journey that involved dodging big icebergs. Well, the French found Minnesota instead and loved it. And they loved the beaver they found here even more. And soon they set up a fur trading post in what is today called Grand Portage. The French really began trading with the Native American tribes here in the northern part of what would become Minnesota. They traded a lot. And that's pretty much what went on here for a long time. Fur trading between Native Americans and European explorers. Fur trading was a big deal. And then lumber replaced furs as the main source of wealth. Fur and lumber were such a big deal in future Minnesota that the French and British had a lot of trading posts all over the northern part of the state. And they used Lake Superior to get the materials back to Europe. Eventually, France gave all the land to Britain. I wasn't there. I don't know why they did it, but they did. Then in 1783, we won the Revolutionary War. As part of the end of that war, they held the Treaty of Paris and the US got all of Minnesota land east of the Mississippi River. That was cool. Then, only 19 years later, we got the rest of Minnesota from the French and the Louisiana Purchase. And that was even cooler. But Britain didn't really leave. I mean, they still had fur trading posts all over and we couldn't have Britain trading with the Native Americans anymore, right? I mean, this was our land, fair and square. So the U.S. built a giant fur trading post so they could exclusively trade with the Native Americans. And that would become present-day St. Paul. We built a bunch of forts all over Minnesota in the early 1800s for military bases and for trading. But that was the biggest one at the time. In fact, the first actual U.S. settlement in Minnesota was Fort Snelling in 1819. By the time 1860 came along, Minnesota's population was 170,000 people. A lot of the people came to harvest Minnesota's vast forests. They were people from present-day Canada, England, Scotland, Ireland, and France. And as more people poured into Minnesota, the Native American lands grew smaller and smaller. Sometimes that led to fighting. A lot of time, actually. Then they ran out of trees. But guess what? They found something else to rip out of the ground. Somebody discovered iron in the mountains, and that was a big deal for a long time, until that ran out sometime in the late 1950s. Then there was even more drama. Everybody up here was farming, but then there was a big drought and all the farms in Minnesota suffered. So people formed the Democratic Farmer Labor Party to protect the interests of Minnesota farmers. 
People like Hubert Humphrey, Eugene McCarthy, and Walter Mondale, they were big players in the newly formed DFL party of Minnesota. Walter Mondale even went on to become the vice president, but then he got his butt kicked by Ronald Reagan in 1984. Eventually, people left the Minnesota farms for the most part and moved into the bigger cities, and Minnesota became known as a place that's liberal on economics, but culturally conservative, at least everywhere where they don't burn things down. And that really happened. For all the Minnesota news you need to know, I'm Skip Fritzman. Thanks, Skip. If you move to Minnesota, you need to know what's going on in the news there. Or if you live here, you should know what's going on here too. Okay, so everybody knows about the George Floyd incident which happened here in Minneapolis, and it was a terrible moment for our nation. But it's worth addressing what's happened since then. Well, in December of 2020, Minneapolis redirected $8 million from the police budget despite record crime rates in the city. The goal was to use the money to fund alternatives to police like mental health crisis teams and violence prevention. And that was despite the huge spike in crime. You know, double the gunshot victims, the tripling of carjackings, and a 20% spike in violent crimes in general. Oh, well, they realized their mistake. Because only two months later, Minneapolis voted to increase their police budget back to where it was before. Because, you know, sorry everybody, that didn't work. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Honestly, I just don't know what these people are thinking. Their experiments are playing with people's lives. Some of the crime can be attributed to a George Floyd hangover, and part of it's because there's new folks in town, aka poor people moving in who've been priced out of Chicago. And it's been a year since all the George Floyd riots, and things are still in bad shape. Now, they rebuilt the Target and the Walgreens and a bunch of other large businesses that were destroyed, but a ton of small businesses still haven't recovered. Now, CNN reported this, which is interesting because, you know, they seem to glorify the chaos when it was happening. There's also been a big rise of homelessness in the Twin Cities areas too, especially on the Minneapolis side of the river. Now that's something Minneapolis folks haven't seen before. And now they have to deal with what many other large liberal cities have. Tents, needles on the ground, discarded condoms, piles of beer cans, vomit and feces in local parks. And that sucks, because as we mentioned earlier, Minneapolis has one of the best park systems in the nation. Will the homeless take over Minneapolis parks? I mean, the conservative side of the river over in St. Paul, they're not catering to the homeless and the criminals as much. Maybe Minneapolis should take a lesson from their neighbor to the east. Huh? And just recently, they found body parts all over town, in the river, on a park bench. What the hell is going on in Minneapolis today? And the political divide's not making things easier. Because, you know, here in Minnesota, there's division between the cities and the burbs. The folks out in the sticks, they don't really like the spike in crime, nor do they like paying for the welfare recipients in the bigger cities. But it's like that anywhere in the U.S. What are you going to do? Now this news sucks. We all know about the major drought that's happening all over the western country, but Minnesota's going through a drought as well. Summer started in May this year, and it's been really hot here. Three quarters of the state's in severe or extreme drought. Ponds and wetlands are beginning to dry up. Yards and parks have dead grass, and even the Mississippi's lower. People's wells are drying up, and of course, the crops are suffering. Some farmers don't even have hay to feed their livestock, and they're worried that younger farmers might quit the business. That's not good for a state which ranks fifth in agriculture, is it? But it might not be such a bad thing, or maybe it is, because the new climate weather pattern means places like Duluth and all these other little cute small Minnesota towns out in the middle of nowhere, they're not climate proof anymore. As it gets warmer up here, realtors are speculating that you might see tons of people moving in up here. Folks who would have otherwise passed on living in a really cold place. Actually, that's probably the last thing rural Minnesotans want. More know-it-alls coming in and land grabbing. Is rural Minnesota going to become the next Montana? Are all these small Minnesota communities going to be overrun by out-of-staters one day? You ask people in Montana and Idaho and Colorado and Utah what they'd say about that. And they'd say... Minnesota, you better stop it now, for it's too late, if you even can. Min is soda, min, min is soda, tells 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 Minnesota is a state that sometimes is so really great. Sometimes. Maybe. Maybe not. So um, I guess for people that are thinking about moving to Minnesota, 
one thing they want to know is like where the best places are to live. You've been there your whole life, practically. Um, for a young family that's a young uh, family that's starting a, um, you know, wants to have kids and get a good job and live in a nice, peaceful place that's mm -hmm. not too expensive. Can you give people like four or five places that um, you think that they should maybe consider moving to in Minnesota? Yeah. Well, Minnesota is so much more than the Twin Cities, the Minneapolis and St. Paul area, which we hear so much about. Um, the southeast corner, Winona, is a great place to live. That's where I um, grew up and has the rolling hills, the bluffs, great education, um, lots of schools there um, on every level, colleges and universities, and um, just a really good place to raise the family. Um, and then you're right on the border with um, Wisconsin, so you can go there. Um, right now we're in the center of the state, which is also really really affordable which we love great place to raise a family good schools good education um the one i guess big downside is the cultural side of things um there's not a lot of cultural arts that kind of thing um which can get kind of frustrating um otherwise the north shore is a huge popular um, place to live um i encourage anyone to really research that area it's beautiful like Duluth? Yep. So it's Duluth and just a little bit past Duluth, just along the, the water. Mm -hmm. um, lots of little cities to go to and Duluth's the big anchor city there. Also an mm -hmm. amazing place to live, Duluth. What about jobs though? Can people realistically live up there and, and have an abundance of companies to choose from? Or is it kind of like a go up there with a job already or work for home kind of place up there? Yeah. Well, I mean, right now everybody is hiring. I mean, everyone every business you go past there's a sign saying hiring um but i mean if um there's a lot of options i mean right now in central minnesota um the jobs aren't as prevalent as in the cities or um duluth or something bigger um but still lots of good options mm -hmm. I, do, I think a lot of people are also concerned about being freezing their asses off if they're up there in Duluth along the lake are they going to be like miserable if, if they're not used to cold or is it oh, like gosh. overrated you will freeze <laughs> it really depends on the winter like the winter two three years ago um we hit negative 50 um and that was the coldest and like everything shut down for that um but usually it's like negative 20 on the coldest days um some years you get lots of snow like some years you get none, like last year we barely got any. So it really depends on the air. But if you're used to the warm, um, you will not like it here, especially on the off the water, like in the Duluth area. That gets bitter being um, pounded by the wind. <laughs> okay. So lots of, lots of good areas, great schools, mm -hmm. safe, affordable, but cold up there. Yes. And I think you gave people an idea on, yeah, on where they could sure. go. It'll be fine. <laughs> right. Um, now, what about the worst places? Where would you tell people don't move to in your state um, if they're wanting to be start a family, safe, good mm -hmm. schools, all that? Well, um, I think anywhere in northern Minnesota, I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for something to do, like cultural stuff to bring your kids to, um, it's a little bit hard. Um not as prevalent as in the cities. Are there any areas, particularly particular cities that people should avoid moving to that you think mm -hmm. get a, that are, are struggling right now with crime and poverty and just aren't good places to raise a family? Well, I mean, I think everyone's heard and read in the news about this, you know, Minneapolis and St. Paul, the Twin Cities. I personally wouldn't raise a family there. Um, it, it definitely is changing. You know, crime is going up. Um, of course, the pro is, you know, the cultural side of things, which is really important to us. They have a lot of good options there. Diversity is great there. Um, but crime-wise, and um, it's definitely a lot more expensive. So we're staying away from that area. So how has Minneapolis changed? Because, you know, I, I feel like... I, growing up you never really heard much about minneapolis it always seemed kind of like a place that was just up in the great far north it seemed like a good place you don't you didn't really hear anything bad lately and i know the george floyd thing just blew up everything but i'm getting an indication 
that it's slowly been getting worse there anyway before that with crime and homelessness and drug use and stuff. Is that true? And like, how has Minneapolis changed? Yeah, I mean, again, this is almost from an outsider's perspective too. I mean, I've always lived about two hours away from the cities. Um, but so I read the same news and see the same um, posts on Facebook that others are seeing. But from my perspective, I mean, growing up, Minneapolis and St. Paul were always the go-to places. Like all of my classmates wanted to move there. It was really exciting. Um, and I'm not getting that as much. I mean, if you want to move to a bigger city, you kind of look outside of Minnesota now. Um, crime is going up. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just because, you know, crime really is getting worse or if there's just such a big spotlight on that area right now because of the George Floyd killing. Um, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So, but it's definitely more dangerous than it was. I mean, it's getting, it seems like it's getting worse with, I mean, I hear about homeless people and stuff mm -hmm. showing up and people seem to be frustrated that live in Minneapolis. Yeah. I mean that from, again, from what I've read, um, I've been, yeah. been there in a while, but yeah. Um, from what I've read, it seems that way. Okay. What about the state in general? What are some issues that Minnesota is facing right now? How is your state changing? Is there anything, uh, are there any issues that you think are worth talking about and sharing? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, I, don't, I, I guess I see Minnesota in such like a positive light. Um, we've done a lot of research um, once we kind of considered moving out of Minnesota, um, research into other states. And um, it really kind of showed me how great Minnesota is. I mean, it's definitely not perfect. It has a lot of room to improve, but um, just overall that everything is so great here. I mean, education is great. There's great outdoor activities. Um it has this fair share of problems, but I don't know, perspective wise, I think it's pretty great. So you guys were kind of actively researching where you could go yeah. you were thinking about leaving Minnesota. And then you kind of realized after doing a bunch of research, like actually maybe we should stay here. That's exactly what happened. And that's how we found your channel. Cause we were looking, you know, what places should we consider moving to? What places should we stay away from? And I mean, and we found some great places that we wouldn't mind moving to, but I mean, we both have such great jobs here and great education and little kids. So it's kind of hard to justify moving away from that. What were some things that you found were missing that you were like, it doesn't have, like Minnesota has this, where we're thinking about going, doesn't have this, doesn't have this, that you yeah. were like, it, it convinced you to stay. The biggest thing is like great paying jobs um, that we have here. Um, and really affordable housing is crazy how expensive houses are out there. Like crazy. <laughs> that was really shocking. So, um, both this current housing market and like just a more expensive place to live, like, um, our bills would just like double. And I mean, how do you justify that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it so inexpensive because it's so cold? Is that <laughs> why? I mean, why? I, I, it's beautiful up there. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, Montana is also very cold. Yeah. And that place is like doubled in price in the last year. Right. Well, it's definitely partially where we live. I mean, central to northern Minnesota is just cheaper, um, considering compared to like, again, the Twin Cities area, which is crazy expensive. Um, but I think the cold definitely has something to do with it. I mean, Minnesota is known for being really cold. And I mean, would want to put up with winters if you could live somewhere sunny which is another reason we wanted to move as well but we're we're willing to put up with winter a little bit longer for yeah the, the good stuff that comes with it well give give people an idea on let's say the, the family wants to move to minnesota you know raise a family places good jobs and that's safe can you give people an idea on a few places in your state that you think would be good for them to consider moving to Hmm. That'd be nice to move to. I'd say, uh, the West suburbs are nice. Like Edina, Minnetonka, Wyzetta, uh, like Plymouth. Um, there's probably some nice places in St. Paul in the city. Um, 
like over by some of the colleges uh like what neighbor like McAllister Park and Highland Park are nice neighborhoods Okay. What yeah. about outside the uh, outside the Twin Cities area? Are there other places in the state that you think people should consider? I like Duluth a lot. Duluth is a nice city, I think. Um, you have a lot of access to nature and the outdoors. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to do there. You know, restaurants and things to go out to and do. Yeah, it's fun. Stillwater is a nice town also in Minnesota. Okay. Um, what, are, what are some places that people should not move to if they're going to move to your state? Um, I'd stay out of uh, most of Minneapolis at this point. Uh, north side Minneapolis, especially. Uh, some of the suburbs haven't been doing as, as great. Brooklyn center i believe um and the east side of st paul so why is minneapolis doing so bad right now i mean you know i i know that crime's been going up um homeless issues been going up you know i but like over the last few years it seems like minneapolis is in the news a lot for bad reasons what's going on why is it why is it getting so bad there it's like uh everything keeps snowballing you know, um, it's like enough people get away with with stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like kind of like the city kind of gave up on itself and is just starting to uh, like self-destruct on itself now. Are you there right now? Do you live in Minneapolis? I live in St. Paul. Okay. I can hear sirens in the background. Is that is that normal? Yeah, that's pretty much normal all times of day and night yeah okay so someone's going to move to the area because you your state actually is a, is a good state in in a lot of ways um you know with 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 jobs and with with health and you know crime outside of minneapolis um you know the weather's kind of dumpy in the winter but like if people are going to move there stay on the western suburbs of minneapolis or up the coast up in duluth area um there's plenty of good places that you can raise a kid but Minneapolis proper is not a good place to be anymore. No. Yeah, I wouldn't say maybe Southwest Minneapolis, Southwest Minneapolis side, but yeah, I wouldn't want to raise a family over there anymore. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.